So what are these particles inside of an atom? Collectively, we call them subatomic. The prefix sub means below, so it's smaller in size than an atom, subatomic particles. All atoms are composed of the same subatomic particles. The three most significant ones are protons, neutrons, and electrons. If you're a fan of physics or just, you know, into science in general, you'll know that there are also other particles. There's muons and pluons and all these other, other different things, neutrinos. and Those are smaller than these. They exist, but we don't deal with them in general chemistry. We're just going to talk about these three. And it's important to understand the basic properties of these three particles. So protons and neutrons, like I mentioned earlier, have nearly identical masses. So for our purposes, we generally just consider them to be the same mass. The masses are really, really small. Um, 1.67262 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and the neutron 1.67493 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So the variation comes in the fourth significant digit. So essentially the same for most purposes. The mass of electron is significantly smaller, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Now just looking at those numbers, it's a little hard to maybe get an idea of the difference. Um, here's an analogy with a baseball. If the proton had the mass of a baseball, then the electron would have the mass of a rice grain. So, you know, if you're considering baseballs and a grain of rice, does the mass of a grain of rice matter at all compared to the mass of a baseball? It really doesn't. So a lot of the time, we just consider the electrons to weigh nothing because they're so small. They're about 2,000 times smaller than the other particles. And for most purposes, they just don't matter. They're very, very tiny. So looking back here real quick, um, kilogram is obviously not a great unit for measuring the mass of these particles. We'd like the, the unit that we use to be similar in size to what we're measuring. This is not at all similar. So we have another unit that we use for small particles like protons and neutrons. It's called, very creatively, an atomic mass unit. It's abbreviated AMU. It's not a relative of an EMU. Um, we, we pronounce that AMU, not AMU. So an atomic mass unit. Um, we define an atomic mass unit as one twelfth the mass of a carbon atom that has six protons and six neutrons. So essentially, the mass of a proton or a neutron is approximately one atomic mass unit. A carbon atom containing six protons <coughs> and six neutrons has 12 of these particles with significant mass. It would weigh 12 atomic mass units. Okay, so an uh, atomic mass unit is one twelfth of that carbon atom. Important to remember the charge of the proton and the electron are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. The neutron has no charge. Here's a nice little table from your book summarizing all this information. Um, you will need these masses for a couple of problems in the homework. Um, but those are not masses you need to memorize, okay? What you should know is that in atomic mass units, the proton is about one, the neutron is about one, and the electron is about zero. It's much smaller. So one, one, and zero. And you should know the relative charges. Protons are positive. They both start with P. Neutrons are neutral zero charge, and electron then is left to be the negative one. So plus one, zero, minus one. And then they might use these charges in a homework problem. If I gave you a problem needing that information on an exam, I would give you that number. Because unless you do lots of calculations with these things, there's no point in memorizing the actual charges and masses of these subatomic particles. So here we're getting to the point where I didn't finish revising the slides. Oh well. They were good enough last year. They'll be good enough. I'll fix them up later. 
Um, elements are defined by their numbers of protons. So how do we identify what element this atom is? It's the number of protons. So the number of protons in the atom's nucleus is called its atomic number, and it's given the symbol Z. Do not ask me why. I would have called it A, but they call it Z, and we have to go what they say. So if we look at, um, what is this, a helium nucleus. Inside the helium nucleus, um, there are two protons. All helium atoms have two protons in their nuclei. If we look at a carbon atom, here's the carbon nucleus. It has six protons. All carbon atoms have six protons. This is the identifying feature of an atom. Okay, it's the number of protons. We call that the atomic number. So periodic table. Here's a nice one on the screen. We also have one up on the wall. On the periodic table, the atomic number is the whole number that is above the element symbol. So we can look at any of the elements on the periodic table and tell how many protons are in the nucleus. So if we look at, say, fluorine. Fluorine atoms have how many protons? Nine. Okay. So the whole numbers, those are the atomic numbers, the number of protons in the nucleus. And you'll notice that each of these elements has a different number of protons. There are no two elements that have the same number of protons. So we identify each element using its atomic number and a chemical symbol. And I quizzed you on those this morning. I'm not making you memorize all of them, but the ones that we're most likely to encounter. The chemical symbol for an element is one or two letters. The first letter is always capitalized. If there is, is a second letter, it is never capitalized. And it's very important to follow that convention. So, you know, just examples. Hopefully you, you guys memorize these already. The symbol for helium is HE. The symbol for carbon is capital C. The symbol for nitrogen is capital N. <coughs> So all atoms of a given element have the same number of protons. They don't necessarily have the same number of neutrons. Neon atoms, every single last one of them has 10 protons. But some of them have 10 neutrons, some have 11 neutrons, and some have 12 neutrons. There are three different versions of neon atoms. Because they have different numbers of neutrons and the neutrons have significant mass, each of these types of atoms has a slightly different mass. And so this disagrees a little bit with the atomic theory that all atoms of a given element are identical. And so that was modified. Atoms with the same number of protons, different numbers of neutrons are called isotopes. Iso is a prefix that means the same. They're the same element, but they're a little different. Okay, a little variation. Same number of protons, though. If we look at a sample, say, of neon that we isolate out of the air here or on the other side of the world, what we'll find is that the relative amounts of each isotope are roughly constant, regardless of where you get that element from. And these are called natural abundance of isotopes. And they're usually expressed as a percentage. So because of advances in technology, um, we now know that there are small but significant variations for many of these elements. But for the purposes of this class, we can kind of gloss over that. How do we identify these different isotopes? Well, one of the things we look at is um, adding together the number of neutrons and protons. That's called the mass number. Neutrons and protons contain almost all the mass of the atom. And so if we add those together, we get an approximate mass in atomic mass units. Mass number is represented by the symbol A. 
Mass number is A, atomic number is Z. Wouldn't it make more sense if atomic number was A? I, 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 one of these days when I have some free time, which I really, really don't, I'm going to look into why they did this because I don't like it. But A is the mass number, number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And so we can use um, a nuclear symbol to specify which isotope we're talking about. And this has this form, where A is the mass number that is a superscript on the left, atomic number is a subscript on the left, and then we have the chemical symbol. Here we're, we're putting in X just as a kind of a variable. So the three isotopes of neon can re be represented this way. Um, they all have the same number of protons, but they have different number of neutrons, and so their mass numbers are different. What do you get if you take 20 minus 10? 10. That's the number of neutrons. If we take 21 minus 10, we get 11 neutrons. And if we take 22 minus 10, we get 12 neutrons. So there we've got the isotope with 10 neutrons, 11 neutrons, 12 neutrons. So that's one way to identify or represent the different isotopes. Another common way is to use either the chemical symbol or the chemical name followed by a dash and the mass number. So here's the chemical symbol followed by the mass number. And so we could represent this as Ne20 or Neon20. Neon21, Neon22. This does not tell us what the atomic number is, but we have the element name. So all we have to do is look on the periodic table, and we can find the, the uh, atomic number 10. So different way of indicating the same isotopes. So here's a table, uh, just kind of summarizing this. Here are the different symbols. Um, they all have the same number of protons because they're all the same element. If the number of protons was different, it'd be a different element. But the number of neutrons can vary. The mass number is just protons plus neutrons. The natural abundances, those are measured experimentally. You cannot get these numbers out of the periodic table or anything. Someone had to do an experiment, and so if you need those, you'll look them up somewhere, or the problem would give them to you. The number of neutrons, this is also determined experimentally. There's no clue in the periodic table of exactly how many neutrons or how many isotopes any given element has. Some elements only have one isotope. All of the atoms have the same number of neutrons. Others have several isotopes. And there's just no predicting from looking at the periodic table. So we need to know what these symbols mean and how to get this information. So what are the atomic number, the mass number, and the symbol for the carbon isotope that has seven neutrons? Well, atomic number. What's the atomic number? It's six, because that is the number of protons. And we find that on the periodic table. So here's carbon. And the number six above tells us that the atomic number is six. That means there are six protons. So atomic number, Z, equals six. What's the mass number? It's going to be 13. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Here's the number of protons, and we're told that it has seven neutrons. So six plus seven equals 13 on most days, and that is the mass number. And then what's the symbol for this isotope? Well, we could call it C13. We could call it carbon. 13, or we can use the nuclear notation. We put the C. The larger number, the mass number, goes on the upper left. That's a 13. And the atomic number goes on the lower left. I 
it just requires a little bit of practice, but you need to be able to understand what those symbols mean. Any questions about that one? How many protons and neutrons are present in an atom represented by this symbol? Well, what does this number in the bottom represent? Number of protons. Okay, so it's got 19 protons, right? 19, oh, I don't want to do that up there. 19 protons. How do we figure out the number of neutrons? We subtract. Isn't this nice? It's all set up for subtraction. 39 minus 19. I think that's 20. So it has 20 neutrons. Any questions? So there's like an endless variation of questions that could be asked about that. So I told you that the number of protons is the identifying factor for an element. In a neutral atom, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. The protons have a plus one charge relative. The electrons have a negative one charge. When you have equal numbers, then overall the atom is neutral. But atoms can gain or lose electrons, which is why we don't use the number of electrons to identify them. We use the number of protons. When atoms gain or lose electrons, they then have a charge. The protons stay the same. The electrons are changing. They're going to have a pot, uh, either a positive or negative charge. And when they're positively or negative charged, we call them ions. A positively charged ion is called a cation. A negatively charged ion is an anion. Those are pronounced cation and anion. It isn't a cation and an anion. Okay. Um, you need to remember which is which. So I personally like cats. We have two cats. I'm very fond of them. I have positive feelings for my cats. So cations are positive. If you hate cats, that's not going to work for you. Um, Look at these two words. This one, they both end in ion, right? But the difference here is anion has an extra N. Anion is the negative one, if that helps you remember. Anions are negative, cations are positive. 